From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Wednesday the 22nd of February 2023. Good afternoon. In today's Spotlight story, we run through the feud between the Russian government and the Wagner Group. This isn't the only thing happening in the world though, so we'll run through three of today's other important stories. And in our exclusive Nebula section, I sit down with Jack and discuss the latest Twitter news. But first, why are Putin and the Wagner Group not on great terms right now? Almost a year into Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, things aren't going exactly how the Kremlin expected or wanted. Beyond the battlefield difficulties, Vladimir Putin appears to have something else to worry about, as a feud between Russia's top military brass and the Russian private mercenary Wagner Group seems to be boiling over. The founder and head of the Wagner Group, Evgeny Prigozhin, whose fighters are increasingly being relied on by Russia for some of the fiercest fighting in Ukraine, accused Russia's top military leaders of actions amounting to treason. In a post on Telegram, Prigozhin said Defence Minister Sergei Shogu and Chief of the General Staff Valery Gerasimov are giving away orders to the left and right, which say that Wagner PMC should also not be given any ammo, but also no help with air transport. He called this direct counterwork and an attempt to destroy his Wagner group, which could amount to treason, particularly at a time when Wagner fighters are trying to capture the strategic Ukrainian town of Bakhmut. The Russian Defence Ministry rejected accusations about blocking ammunition as absolutely untrue, to which Prigozhin responded by saying this was tantamount to nothing more than simply spitting at Wagner, adding again that his men were seriously short of supplies. The Wagner Group has reportedly been filling its ranks by recruiting prisoners, sending tens of thousands of them to the front lines in Ukraine. Many of its fighters are poorly trained, ill-equipped and, according to US intelligence, treated like cannon fodder. Earlier this week, Prigozhin said supplies for his group were being blocked by unnamed officials out of personal animosity towards him. The contrast between Prigozhin and Russia's established military leaders is pretty stark, especially considering Prigozhin's unique rise from Putin's personal chef to head of the most notorious mercenary group in the world. Prigozhin has taken on an increasingly public role since the invasion of Ukraine and is known for being outspoken and seemingly unafraid of criticising the Kremlin. President Putin clearly isn't too happy about the growing cracks within his circle. In a speech this week, he said, we must get rid of any interdepartmental contradictions, formalities, grudges, misunderstandings and other nonsense. The rise of the Wagner Group outside of Russia's traditional military structure seems to have inspired others, like Putin ally and Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov. Kadyrov said Wagner had achieved impressive results and that his time leading Russia's Chechen Republic is over and that when his time leading Russia's Chechen Republic is over, he seriously plans to set up his own private military company in the style of Wagner. OK, so that's our main story for today, but there's a lot more going on around the world. So here's a rundown of three other stories. It's been found today that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will pay about $5 million after they were found to have hidden a cache of shares. This will be split between the church and the financial advisors, Ensign Peak Advisors, with the church paying $1 million and the advisors paying $4 million. The financial markets watchdog claimed that the church and Ensign Peak had used shell companies to hide their investments in shares, which reached a value of almost $32 million. It's been claimed that the church used shell companies as they were worried about the potential negative press that could result from disclosures of their financial situation. Clearly, this decision has backfired a bit. In total, the church has more than 16 million members from more than 30,000 congregations in 160 countries. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Shamima Begum, who left London aged 15 to join the so-called Islamic State group in Syria, has lost her legal challenge against the UK government's decision to strip her of her British citizenship. Begum, now 23, left for Syria in 2015 with two school friends to marry an IS fighter. 
She was discovered in a displacement camp in northern Syria in 2019, after which the Home Secretary Sajid Javid stripped her of her British citizenship on the grounds of national security, preventing her from returning home. Lawyers for Miss Begum had argued that she was groomed, trafficked and sexually exploited by the terror group when she was just a schoolgirl, and that the government had left her stateless. The government argued that she remained a threat to the UK because she had not been left stateless because she was entitled to Bangladeshi citizenship by descent, though she has never been to the country and Bangladeshi authorities say she would not be allowed in. The Special Immigration Tribunal sided with the government and dismissed Begum's appeal on all grounds, meaning she will remain without a British passport in a Syrian detention camp for the foreseeable future. Her lawyer says the legal fight is nowhere near over. Today, a former Mexican security minister has been convicted of drug trafficking in the US. It's been found that Gennaro Garcia Luna accepted millions of dollars from Mexico's biggest crime gang, the Sinoa Cartel. This money was given to him via briefcases delivered to him by members of the cartel. The former minister left Mexico after leaving office and has been living in Texas since. The 54-year-old will be given at minimum a 20-year prison sentence, although he's looking at the possibility of a life sentence. Upon being arrested in 2019, Garcia Luna had pleaded not guilty. His guilty verdict, though, came after a four-week trial and three days of jury deliberation. Following this verdict, Jesus Ramirez Cuvas, a spokesperson for the current Mexican president Andreas Manuel López Obrador, said justice has arrived for the former squire of Felipe Calderón. The crimes against our people will never be forgotten. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss a kind gesture from Heinz. In December last year, Elvis Francois was working on his boat in St. Martin when his boat began to drift off to sea. He had no service and was unable to return to port. He wrote help on the side of his boat and had to simply wait to see if anyone would save him. He was stuck on his boat for 24 days before being rescued and managed to survive on nothing but a bottle of ketchup, garlic powder and some soup. This week though, Heinz has asked the internet to help them find Francois as they want to buy him a new boat. They've already spoken to the government of Dominica and the Colombian Navy to try and find him, but to no avail. Perhaps the internet will come through and help Heinz give him a new boat. That's all we have time for on YouTube today, but if you want to see our discussion of the new Twitter changes, so yeah. come at me Elon fans, <laughs> come at me, then watch the extended ad-free edition of The Daily Briefing over on Nebula. That's the streaming service we're building with a bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to be already watching. That means that by signing up, you not only get an extended ad-free daily briefing every single day, you also get to watch exclusive and ad-free videos from the best educational creators on YouTube. That's things like Real Life Law's incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes around the world, Neo's Underexposure, which beautifully dives into complex and shadowy topics you've always wanted to know more about, or Extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefings and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content which never comes to YouTube. If you want to sign up, use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up and we'll see you on Nebula.